This is Keith. Keith's PC is, um, well, super dirty. And we're gonna clean it. This here is the system and it is super dusty. I'd wager this one is at least as dirty as the last one we cleaned, um, possibly even dirtier. I mean, this one has like, I'm just gonna do it. This has cobwebs, so it's pretty gross. I don't know why I just touched that without gloves on. Now, quick run through of the things that I use to clean these systems. Many of you were asking about that in the previous video. Uh, first off, I used to use air cans. I bought an electric duster this time pretty hardcore. I think it's probably a little more hardcore than I expected it to be, uh, but it has like different interchangeable heads. So this one has a brush head on it. And I think I'm going to use that to clean the circuit boards. I was using paper towels before or just shop towels. Um, those can fray and kind of just split up and break over time. You can still blow that stuff out, but um, this will be a little cleaner. Also Q-tips, fine point Q-tips for the small areas. I use 99% or 99.9% .9 medical grade isopropyl alcohol to clean the PCBs themselves, as well as fan blades, um, just nooks and crannies in the case. Cases. And then of course, got my gloves because, well, I didn't use them for that, but I should have used them. Don't want to touch anything gross. All of this stuff can be found below in the video description. Also, one more thing before we get started. If you live in the Orlando, Florida area and would like your PC clean and it looks somewhat like this, maybe even worse, send my wife an email, lisa at salazarstudios.org. She'll forward the ones that are actually valid to me and then I'll communicate with you about where to meet up. Usually takes me about three or four business days to clean one of these systems. I know you don't wanna be away from your PC for very long. So I, you know, I know it's somewhat time sensitive. Uh, I'm literally cleaning Keith's system the day after I picked it up from him. So uh, I, I usually move pretty fast. This system desperately needs a deep cleaning and I think we're gonna throw a few upgrades in there as well. Stay with me. Corsair's 5000 series cases provide exceptional airflow and plenty of mounting space for up to dual 360 mil radiators in multiple locations. The sleek aesthetic will complement any build and the variety of models offered will cover multiple PC budgets. If you're looking for a mid tower that pretty much does it all, consider the Corsair 5000D, 5000D Airflow and 5000X IQ variants via the link below. So first things first, let's get everything out of here. We're gonna tear everything down to bare PCB, bare CPU, bare cooler, bare case. You get the point.
So you can see we pretty much cleaned up everything. We've stripped everything down, given everything a thorough cleaning. And I have a new case for them. The Fractal Design Mesh if I see a tried and true mid tower. This case is not much larger. Actually it might be about the same size, the same volume as his previous case. And that's important. You don't want to like completely change the form factor of someone's build, especially if they've kind of gotten accustomed to fitting it into a certain space uh, in their house. So we're going to reassemble everything, throw it all into the Meshify C and power it up, make sure everything is still good to go. We'll also check temperatures, make sure things are good there. I also might have one more upgrade up my sleeve. We'll, we'll see about that. So we've reassembled key system in the new case. I wanted to check temperatures real quick before we show you what the system looks like all put together. Also, I've got a hard drive hanging out because uh, he has a ton of hard drives. And for some reason, the system would only boot into the correct partition when these three drives were connected. I have no idea how he's got these volumes set up, but uh, we finally got it together. So I'm gonna put that back in the case as well. Temperatures look decent considering this is a smaller CPU cooler and he's on an i7 from the X79 platform. Temperatures in the low 80s are acceptable. Uh, and uh, the other thing, the graphics card, a GTX 1060, I think we can give them just a bit of an upgrade. How about a GTX 1660? I know this isn't like an RTX 3080 or anything, but uh, this is still a noteworthy step up from even a six gig 1060, which is still a good card, right? For the right price. Um, even 1660s right now are, are kind of marked up in some markets. Um, so it, depending on who you are, where you live, it could be difficult to get a hold of one of these, but I do have an extra a few of these laying around and I haven't used them in quite a while, I haven't tested with them in quite a while. So go ahead and upgrade them to this thing. Uh, it should be a pretty straightforward upgrade. I'm gonna pull this out real quick. I even have it still wrapped in the bubble wrap that it came in. It's kind of weird that EVJ packages these cards like this. I think this is a noteworthy transformation. What it looked like in the beginning, uh, yeah, wasn't too pretty. I think now it has a new life, X79 revived. It's still a viable platform, especially if you're on a budget. And uh, hey, I mean, this system's clean again, so there's that. And here we go. We've given new life to his X79 platform. Uh, I love seeing older hardware put to good use. I think this combination here with the 1660 is great. Yeah, he's on a, I mean, it's an older CPU, let's be real. Uh, but I think that the combination of hardware is still healthy. It's still balanced, so to speak, especially for some 1080p and 1440p gameplay. All in, when his system arrived, uh, yeah, it was quite dirty. I mean, when you've got cobwebs and like just big old dust bunnies hanging from the exterior of your system, um, that's that's quite scary. But it has been revived, brought back from the dead, so to speak. It looks pretty good. I mean, apart from the smaller CPU cooler, like if I had more time, I'd probably upgrade this as well. Uh, although now that he has his new graphics card, he might uh, see this as the next logical thing to upgrade. Uh, I think after that, you'd probably want to upgrade the entire platform. You could still get some decent money for some X79 combos out there. So maybe consider selling this on the used market in a year or two. Uh, but altogether, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Again, you can find all the stuff that I used to clean this system in the video description. If you want to clean systems like this yourself, maybe you already do. Maybe you have suggestions on how to clean more efficiently. Uh, leave those comments down below as well. With that, I'll say one more time, if you guys live in the Orlando, Florida area or are willing to drive to Orlando with your system for at least uh, four or five days uh, and you want your system cleaned, it looks really dirty, send an email to my wife, lisa at salazarstudios.org 
please don't send us systems, uh, pictures of systems that look good. Okay, like that's, that's not the point. Even if your cable management is like horrible, if your system's still clean, I mean, I guess I could do a video or two on cable management, but the, the real like satisfying aspects of videos like these comes down to like cleaning the dust you know, reviving these systems, uh, making them look virtually brand new again. Uh, so please only submit emails uh, to Lisa if they, you know, if, if your system is, is ugly. That's kind of the point. Uh, so ugly systems, bring them on, folks. I got an electric duster now. I can handle anything. With that, if you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Consider subscribing if you have not already, and I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for cleaning with me.